In this video, we'll be looking at how to use the Yates continuity correction in order to do a chi-squared test where we only have a small 2 by 2 um, table. So we only have two rows, two columns. So whenever that happens, we have a small amount of values. We want to do the Yates continuity correction in order to reduce the error that could occur in your test. So the formula to use the Yates continuity correction is chi-squared corrected by Yates is equal to the sum, and this is a big, nice big sum sign, of FO minus FE minus 0.5, so that's where the change comes in, squared all over at FE. So I made my sum sign pretty big because I wanted to make sure that you saw that we're adding up everything calculated here. So we're going to calculate that thing that I just circled four times and add it up. So first we need an expected frequency table. So we already have our observed frequency table or FO table of values and we're going to get an FE table of values which looks almost identical. So again, it would be high GPA, low GPA, male and female, just like our observed frequency table. And of course, we know we need the sums in order to find our FE values. So 16, 15, 31, 17 and 14. So we just added everything up to get our sums. And Recall that in order to figure out FE values, we need to do the sum of the row, oh, sum of the row over total sum times the sum of the column, which means, and I'll do one just to remind you, if we wanted to fill in that value, or sums, let's put them in so we know what they are. They're the same as they were in the other table. So our sums were 17, 14, 31, 16, and 15. Those are the sums we just calculated over here. All right, so in order to fill in this value, it's the sum of the row, which is 17, over the total sum. So the total sum right here is 31, times the sum of the column, which is 16. And once you've done that, you should get 8.77. So you're going to have to do that a bunch of times to figure out the other three values, or you can just figure out what it is from the sums. So do that and meet me back here in two seconds. Okay, so now we have some FE values, some expected frequencies that go with our observed frequencies. On the left, we have the observed ones, and on the right, we have the expected ones. So now we are able to use those values to calculate our Yates continuity correction value. And again, the formula is shown in red. So in order to calculate it, we should probably use a table so we can organize all our information. And we need our observed frequencies. We also need our expected frequencies. We need to first, according to our formula, subtract our expected frequencies from our observed frequencies. And find the absolute value of that. Once we've done that for each set of numbers, we can then subtract 0.5. So all I'm doing right now is looking at our formula and following each of the steps that are in the formula. So we subtract our 0.5 and then we can square the result of that. So FO minus FE minus 0.5. We can then square the result of that and I'm running out of space here. But our final step is uh, to do that whole thing. So I'll just put a little arrow there so we know that's what we're going to do in the last column. 
Okay, so now we can lift, list our FO values, and they're all there listed for us up there, so I'm just going to rewrite them here. 10, 7, 6, and 8. Now, the order that you write those values in do not matter as long as you are consistent when you write your FE values. So we went from the first box to the right and then, back, and then down. So 10, so we have 8.77, that matches it. Then 8.23, then 7.23, and 6.77. So now let's fill in the first row together, and then you can do the other rows on your own, and we can see if our answers match. All right, so when you subtract 10 minus 8.77, so the first row, our absolute value of that answer is 1.23. You take 0 0.5 away from it in the next column, and you get 0 0.73. You square that number, as we should, in the next column, and we get 0 0.5329. And we then sub sorry divide this value by this FE value. So we're not dividing by the sum of FE, we're dividing by the respective frequency, expected frequency value, okay, in that row. So when we do that, we should get 0 0.0608. Now, go ahead and try those, the rest of them, on your own, and we will meet back here in two seconds. Okay, great. So we now found all of the values um, that we calculated using this formula. And as we can see from our big red sum sign, we're going to now have to add them up in order to figure out Yates continuity correction value. So when we add them up, we should get the sum of all those numbers is 0 0.278. So that's our Yates continuity correction value. And let's just quickly go through again what we do with that value. We actually do the same thing we would have done with our regular chi-squared value. Okay, so as you know, our Yates continuity correction value is 0.278. And I went ahead and I used a formula booklet, Table of Values, to figure out that at the 5% significance level, our critical chi-squared value is 3.841. And as you may recall, if the chi-squared value, in this case that we calculate, so if the one that we calculate is bigger than the critical chi-squared from our critical table of values, we reject our null hypothesis. What's our null hypothesis in this particular case? Well, we have one category, which is gender, and another category, which is GPA. Our null hypothesis states that gender and GPA are independent. Now, if that's our null hypothesis, we can work from there and see what's going to go on with this test. Okay, so our chi-squared Yates, if it's bigger than our k, we would reject the null hypothesis. But what I just wrote down is absolute nonsense. It is not bigger than our k. So we will not reject the null hypothesis. That means we accept the null hypothesis. That's the null hypothesis, so we're going to accept that statement. So in fact, gender and GPA are independent. And we're done.